हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर अमित भटनागर वर्किंग एज सीनियर रिसर्च ऑफिसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एग्नोमी एट जी बी पंत यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पंतनगर उत्तराखंड इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल टेल यू अबाउट द डिफरेंट फॉर्म ऑफ रेडिएशन सोलर रेडिएशन लाइक डायरेक्ट सोलर रेडिएशन नेट रेडिएशन टेरेस्ट्रियल रेडिएशन डिफ्यूज रेडिएशन ग्लोबल रेडिएशन वट आर दीज टाइप ऑफ रेडिएशन एंड विच इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स आर यूज टू मेजर these different type of radiation so there is a confusion about the net radiation global radiation diffuse radiation so please watch this lecture carefully then there will be no doubt in these different form of solar radiation so as we know that solar radiation is the uh, radiation which is emitted by sun is known as solar radiation and solar radiation is a type of uh, energy actually it is electromagnetic radiation and if we talk about electromagnetic radiation then it has a different type of wavelength but in case of solar radiation electromagnetic radiation consist of three category we can say uh, number 1 is ultraviolet radiation number 2 is visible length radiation or uh, visible hum uh, jise kehte hain blue to uh, red and third one is infrared radiation so uh, sun is the source of heat and energy so it is sun and it emit uh, the radiation and suppose it is our earth and this is the uh, boundary of atmosphere uh, of the earth outer boundary of earth so radiation is emitted by the sun and it reach to the atmosphere at the outer surface of the atmosphere without any change so this is solar radiation and no change occur up to the outer layer of atmosphere as this surface outer surface is start then clouds are there air is there different gases are there dust particles are there pollutants are there a number of things are there and because of presence of these things radiation is affected and how this radiation is affected actually when radiation move across a, a substance then there may be three fat either it may be absorbed this uh, light or radiation absorbed or may be reflected back that is non reflection and may be like that it is deflected it move forward but deflected it means scattered and may be that it may pass the substance suppose it is transparent then it may pass that is transmitted so these phenomena occur when a radiation or a light hit a substance so there may be chance of absorption means absorb this substance absorb the light or radiation may be reflected back in that direction from which light is coming may be uh, scattered means may deflected in any direction but in general forward direction and may be transmitted if it is a transparent if it is not a transparent like opaque then it is not transmitted so uh, this is the fate of actually the radiation so same fate means absorption reflection scattering and transmission occur in this atmosphere so all this process take place in the atmosphere and the outer layer of atmosphere and no change occur between the sun and the outer surface of atmosphere so absorption and reflection maybe by clouds by dust particle by gas and suppose if gases a uh, cloud is there cloud then these clouds have more reflection so reflection by the cloud uh, depend upon the thickness of the cloud uh, whether it is a thick or thin or sparse or dense so it depends upon the cloudiness but in general it is about 25% reflected by the clouds so it is the reflection the light come on the cloud and it is reflected back into the space so on an average value is 25% it 
If cloud is thin, it may be less than 25%. If it is thick, it may be more. It depends upon the cloudiness. So it is the average value. Then by the atmosphere, atmosphere means gases are there. Then these gases uh, like CO2, methane, nitrous oxide and also water vapor. These gases absorb the radiation. So absorption is there. So absorption is about 22%. 22% light is absorbed. Now this absorption value also depend upon the water content. Actually water content vary from location to location. So this is the on an average value that 22% radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere means which are responsible for absorption in the atmosphere water vapor, CO2, methane gas, nitrous oxide gas, ozone gas. So they are different gases which absorb the radiation. So 25% reflected by the clouds, 22% absorbed by the atmosphere gases and the water vapor and some uh, small particles are there, dust particles are there, pollutants are there and these particles cause the scattering and scattering may be in any direction. So radiation is there, scattering may be in any uh, direction and towards the earth this scattered radiation is about 10%. So 10% is scattered, it is average value. 10% scattered radiation come on the earth surface. So it means the 25% is absorbed, or oh sorry, 25% reflected, 22% absorbed. So it is about 47%. So it means 47% radiation is either reflected or retained into the atmosphere. So remaining value that is 53%, 53% including this scattered reach on the earth surface including 10%. If we uh, remove the 10% it means 43 is direct solar radiation. So including this scattered radiation it is 53%. But earth when received uh, on the earth snow is there, uh, vegetation is there, stone, soil all these things reflect the radiation. So reflection by the earth, this reflection by the earth is about 4%. So 4% reflection. Now this is average value. It depends upon the presence of water. In case of water, absorption is there, refraction is less. Most of the refraction, uh, reflection is by snow and ice. Snow on mountain and ice in the sea water. And... Uh, if in case of forest, there is uh, absorption. So reflection is a, uh, a quantity, a reflection quantity depend upon the type of material. If snow is there, there, definitely there will be more reflection. In case of vegetation, reflection will be less. And in case of water bodies uh, like river, sea, uh, ocean, etc., then uh, absorption will be more and reflection will be less. So this is the average value. So it means now further this 4% is reflected uh, back by the earth surface. So remaining uh, radiation that is received by the earth is 49%. So 49% radiation is received by the earth. Actually it is uh, average value 53% but 4% reflected back. So it is 49% radiation. It may be 47%. It may be 45%. If absorption is there more, if reflection is more, then this quantity will be less. If uh, reflection is less, absorption is less, then it may be more than 50%. So on an average, it is about 46%, 47%, 48%. So 48, 49, uh, this is the average value uh, when uh, clouds are there, dust particles are there, pollutants are there. So this is the uh, radiation which is uh, uh, reach on the earth. The important thing is that no change occur between the sun and outer atmosphere, outer layer of the atmosphere. All the changes, reflection, absorption, scattering occur in the atmosphere. So this is very important. It, this process not occur in whole space between the earth and sun. It is not like that. It occur 
only into the atmosphere so scattering scattering is by dust particles and air molecules if dust particles are more then definitely there will be more scattering and scattering direction may be uh, any direction so towards the earth it is about 10 percent then atmospheric gases very important the atmospheric gases absorb the radiation and uh, water vapor co2 methane nitrous oxide ozone these are very important gases which are responsible for absorption and the reflection by the clouds and it depends upon the cloudiness so uh, so it means the radiation which is reaching on the earth depends upon a number of factors what is the cloudiness what is the composition of atmospheric gases particularly water vapor content which is responsible for absorption and what is the amount of uh, pollutant dust particles particulate matter which are responsible for scattering so the atmosphere of a location will decide the how much radiation is on the earth then this reflection also depend upon the uh, features present on that particular location suppose if water bodies are more then there will be uh, more absorption and less reflection if uh, plants are there then medium uh, uh, absorption and about 20 25 percent reflection if snow is there white fresh snow is there then reflection may be about 90 percent so average value is about four percent on the earth so overall 49 percent radiation is on earth and uh, this is scattering uh, when we talk about the uh, radiation solar radiation actually it is uv radiation visible light vl and infrared ir so uh, scattering is in generally uv radiation and visible light so visible light and uv radiation a smaller wavelength uh, radiation is scattered more while absorption is of infrared radiation so most of the infrared radiation of solar radiation is absorbed and most of the ultraviolet and visible light is scattered and this scattered radiation is also known as diffused radiation diffused radiation or sky radiation for example uh, I am uh, in this room and there is no direct sunlight but sunlight is coming from window and other opening or doors and this light is diffused radiation. The light sunlight is striking on the outer object like plant, road, building etc and scattering is there then this light come into the uh, a, a room and with this diffused light we can see the object. So in this room there is no, no direct sunlight but sunlight may be come from the diffuse radiation. So this diffuse radiation is very important because uh, suppose uh, it is a plant, it is a plant on earth surface and this is the canopy. So direct solar radiation is on upper canopy. So there is a proper availability of radiation but this lower leaves, this lower leaves get the radiation from the diffuse radiation that is uh, by scat uh, scattering so diffuse radiation is very important because uh, in inside the canopy or into the plant most of the radiation is diffuse radiation and the direct solar radiation is on upper canopy in lower leaves the diffuse radiation reach and then there is a photosynthesis so diffuse radiation is very important another importance of diffuse radiation is that the scattering or diffusion is of ultraviolet light and visible light so it means when diffuse radiation is there it means there is more proportion of visible light which is responsible for photosynthesis so this is the importance of diffuse radiation so when we talk about the photosynthesis then diffuse radiation is more effective than direct solar radiation because of two reasons because in direct solar radiation all the radiation is there uv vl and infrared but in diffuse radiation proportion of visible light is more so that's why which is responsible for photosynthesis number two availability availability of direct solar radiation is only on the top of the canopy but diffuse radiation reach on all the mm, uh, place or every leaf on the plant and uh, responsible for photosynthesis that's why diffuse radiation is more effective as compared to direct solar radiation so this is about the uh, reflection absorption scattering and this uh, total incoming radiation is direct radiation plus diffuse radiation. 
so it is very important to note that the total incoming total incoming radiation is sum of sum of direct radiation plus diffused radiation so this is very important now now what are the different instruments which are used to measure or to quantify this different type of radiation and it is generally asked in competitive examination so there are different fate of uh, radiation if a reflection is there reflection and this reflection or reflected radiation or we can say reflected radiation is uh, measured by albedo meter actually a uh, reflected radiation is known as albedo reflection is known as albedo so reflected radiation is uh, measured by albedo meter then direct solar radiation direct solar radiation is measured by pyre heliometer pyre heliometer helio is related with the sun pyre heliometer then diffused radiation diffused radiation it, this radiation which is caused by scattering of the light and it is measured by shading pyranometer shading pyranometer and the sum of direct plus diffused that is total incoming radiation total incoming radiation or also known as uh, global radiation or uh, total incoming is appropriate word uh, or we can say global radiation it is measured by pyranometer then par photosynthetically active radiation that is visible light visible light spectrum that is from 400 to 700 nanometer vibgeor violet indigo blue green yellow orange red which is responsible for photosynthesis and it is measured by quantum sensor or par sensor quantum sensor or par sensor then terrestrial radiation terrestrial radiation radiation which is reflected by the earth which is uh, about uh, approximate 4% uh, as we discussed by the earth surface that is terrestrial radiation terrestrial is related to the earth so radiation which is uh, which is uh, emitted by the earth because the some radiation is emitted by earth and this terrestrial radiation is general uh, in infrared radiation more wavelength so this terrestrial radiation is measured by pyre geometer pyre geo geo means earth so we can remember this name geo means earth helio means sun so direct solar radiation by pyre heliometer geometer means terrestrial radiation terrestrial radiation that is emitted by the earth so uh, total incoming radiation is there then earth emit the radiation terrestrial radiation in long wavelength so the difference is no, uh, known as nat radiation so nat radiation uh, is the balance between the total incoming radiation minus terrestrial radiation and it is uh, measured by nat radiometer nat radiometer so these are the different type of instrument which are used for the measurement or to quantify the different type of radiation so direct solar radiation and diffused radiation these are very important and these two uh, make the global radiation or total incoming radiation so these are different instrument so this was about the uh, different type of radiation and the instrument which are used 
to determine or to quantify the radiation. So when we talk about the solar radiation, then absorption, reflection, scattering, these are the three processes we should remember. Absorption by the atmosphere, reflection by cloud, scattering by the dust particles. Then there is a direct solar radiation and most of the uh, important radiation or we can say the radiation by which we see in the room or inside the building that is the diffuse radiation and diffuse radiation is very important and this diffuse radiation and direct solar radiation makes the total incoming radiation when this radiation come on the earth then it is reflected by the earth which is known as terrestrial radiation so these are the different type of radiation thank you very much